Ah, soda ash. That pesky white film that can appear on your beautiful handmade soap, striking fear into the hearts of even the most seasoned soap maker. We've all been there, staring at our creations, wondering where we went wrong. But fear not, my fellow soaping enthusiasts. Soda ash, while aesthetically undesirable, is a common occurrence and thankfully a purely cosmetic one. It doesn't affect the quality or lather of your soap. In fact, it's simply a harmless byproduct of the saponification process, a testament to the magic happening within those soap molds. In this journey through the world of soap making, we'll demystify soda ash and explore the factors that influence its formation. We'll delve into the science behind liquid to lye ratios, uncover the impact of humidity and temperature, and even unravel the mysteries of goat milk soap. Most importantly, we'll equip you with an arsenal of practical solutions to minimize soda ash and empower you to create stunning, ash-free masterpieces. Let's embark on this adventure together. And remember, even the most experienced soap makers have encountered soda ash along the way. One of the most talked about factors influencing soda ash formation is the liquid to lye ratio in your soap recipe. This ratio, often expressed as 3 to 1 or 2 to 1, represents the amount of liquid used per unit of lye. A 3 to 1 ratio allows for a longer saponification process and a more relaxed drying time. A 2 to 1 ratio speeds up saponification and promotes faster drying. Why does this matter for soda ash? A lower liquid content leads to less water evaporating during curing. This reduces the likelihood of soda ash forming on the surface. While helpful, it's not a foolproof guarantee against soda ash. While the liquid to lye ratio plays a significant role in the soda ash saga, it's not the only actor on the stage. Enter the environmental factors, humidity, and temperature. These sneaky culprits can wreak havoc on your soap-making endeavors if left unchecked. Humidity, that invisible force in the air, can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. High humidity levels create a moisture-laden environment making it difficult for your soap to dry properly and increasing the chances of soda, ash, rearing its head. Conversely, low humidity can lead to rapid evaporation, potentially causing other issues like cracking, temperature. The other key player influences the speed of saponification and the overall curing process. Warmer temperatures accelerate saponification potentially leading to overheating and, you guessed it, more soda ash. Cooler temperatures, while slowing things down, can also increase the risk of soda ash if the soap takes too long to dry. Section 4. Goat milk soap and the ash mystery. A special case. Now, let's talk about goat milk soap a beloved variety known for its creamy lather and gentle properties. While delightful in many ways, goat milk soap presents a unique challenge in the battle against soda ash. The culprit, sugars. Goat milk, along with other milk varieties, contains naturally occurring sugars. These sugars, while adding to the soap's luxurious feel, can react with the lye during saponification increasing the likelihood of soda ash formation. Moreover, the curing conditions for goat milk soap can further exacerbate the issue. Due to its higher sugar content, goat milk soap tends to require a longer curing time than its non-milk counterparts. This extended curing period, coupled with fluctuations in humidity and temperature, creates a perfect storm for soda ash to develop. 
Section 5 Outsmarting Soda Ash Tried and True Techniques Fear Not Intrepid Soap Makers While soda ash may seem like a formidable foe, we have a secret weapon knowledge. Experiment with different liquid to lie ratios. Start with a 2.5 to 1 ratio and adjust. Protect your soap from the elements. Cover it with plastic wrap to prevent air contact. Consider additives like sodium lactate, a natural humectant. Control the gel phase by monitoring the temperature during saponification. Lastly, maintain slightly higher temperatures during curing. A warm, dry environment helps your soap cure more quickly and evenly. Section 6. Your Soap Making Journey. Share, Learn, and Grow. The world of soap making is a journey of discovery filled with both triumphs and challenges. Remember, you're not alone in this adventure. Share your experiences, ask questions, and learn from fellow soap makers. What works for one soap maker may not work for another, so don't be afraid to experiment and find what suits your style and environment best. Have you discovered a foolproof method for preventing soda ash? What adjustments have you made to your process that have yielded fantastic results? Share your wisdom and troubleshooting tips in the comments below. Let's create a supportive community where we can all learn and grow together. Section 7. Embrace the Imperfections. Celebrating Handmade Soap. As we conclude our exploration of soda ash, let's remember that soap making at its heart is an art. It's a process of transformation, of creating something beautiful and unique with our own hands. And just like any art form, imperfections are part of what make it special. So, if you find a touch of soda ash on your soap, don't despair. Embrace it as a reminder of the handmade nature of your creation. Remember, it's purely cosmetic and doesn't detract from the quality or enjoyment of your soap. In fact, it can even add a touch of rustic charm. Keep experimenting, keep learning, and most importantly, keep creating. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow soap-making enthusiasts. Happy soaping!